Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Eleanor here and I just wanted to do this little intro to the video you're about to watch um, because this was shot about two months ago back in January. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of an intro because I had blonde hair back in this video and you might get confused, but that's why. So I just wanted to give you that little heads up and I hope you enjoy it. Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit um, of a different story about me um, and I want to share with it with you because we're on that we're on that path right now. So yesterday I did my fridge clean and some of you may have noticed that I took out some little boxes that were in the fridge. Some of you who may not have ever been through any fertility treatments, may not have ever picked up on it. But if there was something that you noticed, it is um, IVF medication that was in the fridge. Um, and I still had it there from our last uh, cycle that we did in December 2021. So I just wanted to share that with you, I think, that because it's something quite important to me, it's something that's been very important to me all these years. Um, so I don't really know where to start, but I guess from the beginning is probably the best place. Um, so we, um, Drew and I got married and we wanted to start a family right away. We were both very ready to start a family. Um, we thought we were going to have a honeymoon baby um, when we went on our honeymoon. And that didn't happen. And two years passed um, before we were able to conceive our son. And we conceived him through IVF treatment. So I did a full cycle, never done it before. I was 30 years old and it was an experiment because nothing else was working and we really wanted a family. So we were very lucky that we could use our own DNA and we were able to conceive him on our very first cycle. So I know that that's even in itself very fortunate in the IVF um, scheme of things. So we were very blessed and we just thought, wow, we just needed to get things in the right place at the right time and that was the help we needed. So... Tom was wonderful, wonderful baby, loved being a mum. We wanted two children. We said we wanted two children right from the start before we even knew we would be going down the IVF path. So that was interesting and that hadn't changed. Um, so by the, when Tom got to nine months old, I was ready to start again. I think Drew needed a bit more time looking back. Um, but he said yes at the time and so we went down that pathway again um, of going back to the same clinic, same doctor and just to replicate the same thing we had done, hoping for the same success. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So we did two more cycles, two more full cycles. So after, when I say a full cycle, I mean doing um, injections for about 10 days and then doing an egg retrieval and then starting on um, and then they take our eggs and sperm to the lab and create an embryo and all separate to this then I start healing and going on to progesterone in preparation for a five-day transfer. So we had done that with Tom and he was our only embryo. So we had no frozen embryos. We had no other embryos at the end of that cycle. And the same things were happening the second time around. So the second cycle, the one directly after Tom, the transfer just didn't take. Um, so I did not have positive pregnancy test. My beta was zero, three, I think the result was. And that was the end of that. That was December 18. And then we decided to strike while the iron was hot. I remember feeling and thinking that way that, well, we'll just go again. Um, so these were all done privately as well. So um, 
pretty much. We were out of pocket, I believe, including all the drugs, everything that I've I calculated over the years. It's probably been about $5,000 each cycle that were actually out of pocket. Um, that's that's um, We get money back, but up front we have to come up with about eight and a half. Um, each time and then you get some money back so um, yeah so we did that first cycle unsuccessful the second cycle was in the January 19 and that um, took I became pregnant and um, no sorry not January that actually would have been like March 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 19. So um, because I believe um, the doctors all went on holidays during January and then there was limited cycles February. So sorry, memory is trying to kick in. So yeah, it would have been around March 19 and I was fell pregnant, had a positive pregnancy test, had good HCG results and my bloods. So I remember sitting back and saying to Drew in our old house going, wow, two out of three cycles. That's, geez, we can't ask for much better than that. That's, that's incredible. So we were very lucky. We felt very lucky. Um, I think even at the time, maybe it was still a bit fast for Drew. Um, you know, Tom, he was, um, you know, I wanted to have, I didn't want to, I didn't want to waste time in between children um, without really, I didn't want to be an older mum that didn't, um, appeal to me and what's old these days, lots of different definitions. But anyway, that was just how I was feeling at the time. And so I was pregnant. It was great. Um, we went for our six week scan to see the heartbeat and there was no heartbeat. So I, that was a very dark place. I had never um, experienced a miscarriage before or any type of loss, child loss in that way. Um, so that was probably the saddest experience, um, a deeply saddening experience of losing that little one. Um, it, I was just, well, didn't expect it. Um, I feared it, but I didn't expect it. So we even had Tom there that day at the doctor's to see the scan. And yeah, that was really hard. Um, I just went home. I was supposed to go to work after it. I just went home and just kind of fell in a heap. I was just so confused, um, how it could happen and why. Oddly enough, I think it was two days before the scan, I had had a dream where something was wrong with the baby and I had told Drew, it bothered me that much, I had told Drew saying, I think there's something wrong with the baby. It's just nerves, sweetie, don't worry about it. And unfortunately, it was probably true. Well, it was true. Anyway, that was a traumatic experience. Um, but we wanted to try again. I just didn't know when um, that miscarriage it was what they eventually called a missed miscarriage in my case I didn't even know what that was um, my body wasn't responding and miscarrying um, it just kept keeping it there so that was really odd a really strange experience for my family and my friends because it was just so foreign so it was hard to um, you know, support was there, but it was, it was, um, it was just still something I felt like I had to get through on my own in a lot of ways. So that was difficult and it took a while. So by the end of 19, um, after I'd had a DNC and gone through that, that was really, that was really hard. I'll probably do maybe another intimate video on that to share because um, if at all I can help another woman to understand the feelings throughout a process like that and 
unfortunately miscarriages are common in our world but if ever I could support another woman or couple through a tough time like that I would like to do that and if I can do that through a video by sharing um, my experience then I'll I'll do that in the future for you so I did a lot of healing through that year of 2019 um, and by doing that I was able to seek help from I shared my story with some girlfriends and met some new girlfriends in the process and um, was able to get help from a new doctor in 2019 um, and I ended up going through a hysteroscopy and laparoscopy to see if I had endometriosis and I did so that was a surprise I didn't know I had endometriosis um, my only symptom was infertility so that was really um, interesting and a bit eye-opening and I was already flabbergasted by the medical um, assisted reproduction community and this just added to that I was quite fascinated by it all and how it all worked so I had this wonderful doctor who um, helped me with that and that was in yeah November 19 um, we where are we then? We, I needed some time after that um, because then at the beginning of 2020, we were deciding what to do, um, when to do a cycle. Um, so at this point, I've had the three cycles um, and with Tom being our successful baby. So... By 2020, I was um, I was in a new job. Um, oh no, I wasn't. Not yet. Sorry, gave you a um, peak preview. Um, in 2020, COVID started to come into the world, and clinics shut down. So when things started to reopen, I think it was like maybe um, August. Um, and I was readying myself to go down that path again. So it had been over a year um, that I needed some time since the last cycle. And I knew I'd have to do all the injections again. And so I found a new clinic, a new doctor, had a consultation. Consultation was a little funny. Um, he was a different character, the doctor. Um, but his confidence and I wanted to give it a go with them and so we did but what we attempted to do which we had never done before was an all freeze cycle so any embryos that we did get we would just freeze there was no fresh transfer um, and um, save them for another time that we would transfer which we hoped wouldn't be that long after but it was just something different to, to try because um, we'd never done that before. And we didn't get any embryos to freeze. So we did um, um, two all free, freeze all cycles or all free cycles. And they were very heartbreaking. Um, I'd been through the injections, the egg retrieval again each time. So now I'm up to my fifth egg retrieval procedure and I was getting very used to it by now. Um, I actually started to enjoy being put under anesthetic, <laughs> which is really horrible. And in that time I'd had a DNC, I'd had the lap laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. Um, I'd had Tom's C-section. I had had, you know, what felt like all these medical procedures. So, um, yeah, it was an odd type of thing and an odd sort of failure it felt like um, that IVF was now failing us um, and that I was failing uh, being able to fall pregnant again um, after our first son so so we did two of those all freeze cycles and then I was determined no more no more freeze all cycles that's not working for us this isn't working for us um, I don't know what to tell your doctor, but I'm not doing it again. 
So we decided in the January of 2021 that we would do a fresh transfer. Um, so we tried that and we got one to transfer. Again, no, none to freeze at all. Um, and we got one to transfer and it didn't take. So there was no pregnancy out of that. So that was um, my sixth cycle of injections every time, no frozen embryo transfer, um, no frozen embryos and that with a, a transfer at five days, but yeah, with a developing blastocyst, an early stage blastocyst. So that was um, close to the end for me. I was becoming very disinterested. We, Drew and I had even discussed and gone down the pathway of thinking about foster care for children instead of having our own. So that became a very real conversation. Um, and by May, when we were having all those conversations about other avenues, we found a new house and we had a new focus. And we started fixing up our old place to sell. And that gave us a lot of time to think in between. And IVF was the furthest thing from my mind at the time. And I had um, then started a new job <laughs> um, at the same time that we were selling our old house. So that was all happening at once. And then... I had this feeling through October 2021 and I had just literally spoken to a friend of mine who asked about if we were doing IVF again because we hadn't done one since January with a failed transfer and I said it's actually the furthest thing from my mind. I'm very happy with Tom. I love Tom. I always wanted another child but it um, it wasn't with us yet. So we... Um, Within a day or two, I was sitting in front of my computer at work, just working, looking at the screen. And I just had this absolute epiphany. It's no other word to describe what it was. And it just was like, you got to do IVF again. So straight away I didn't let it the dust settle I called up the fertility clinic a new clinic that I had found after the last cycle thinking we would do it again and then things just kind of you know took over with the house and the move and everything and planning Tom for school and I um just called them straight away um got in with a consultation it was a bulk bill clinic, so it was not going to cost us as much. And we could do a fresh transfer. And I couldn't believe that. And they were all wonderful, like all the nurses, the staff that I'd spoken to. The doctor was completely different, totally different personality. And um, we did a new cycle in December 2021. And... We were like, let's do it. Let's let's do it now. So we, I went through the injections for a seventh time, and we were fantastically lucky in my egg retrieval that I got. They retrieved eighteen eggs, which was more eggs than I've ever had, and thirteen of them were mature, and eleven of them fertilized. So that was the best result we'd ever had. So it was a new clinic, new doctor, a new time for me um, and Drew, new medication. So that was a really big key thing in this. I feel that this new doctor understood and had experience that uh, maybe just different experience that this medication that they just cookie cutter put all these women on just doesn't work for everybody and may not get the same results so I was just he was just absolutely astounded that I had my body responded so quickly I didn't I wasn't on the medication for as long this time either because I just responded so well 
my follicles responded well and I felt good about it and it was just a really different cycle right from the start so that was really positive and then we did the transfer um, sort of whatever it was a couple of weeks out from Christmas which I was a bit nervous about because I had done a Christmas transfer before which had been unsuccessful so I was a bit worried about doing that um, and unfortunately the transfer didn't work so I did get a very faint positive line at nine days past transfer and the next day it was slightly darker so I was hopeful then and then the following day the line was almost non-existent so when we spoke to our doctor about that he basically suspected that was a chemical pregnancy which knowing that now I could say that I've had you know a couple of throughout the processes that we've done so that was really interesting but the biggest thing and the biggest difference with this cycle was we were lucky enough that we had one to transfer so I uh, one to freeze sorry one to freeze and um, so we decided that again strike while the iron's hot while we're doing it while we're in that headspace that in January in that in that month that I would um, ready get do the cycle natural cycle for the frozen embryo transfer so that's where we are right now <laughs> so all injections were done um, this was lucky seven honestly we don't have any more money to do another cycle at the moment so bearing all but it's real you know paying for these things even the bulk bill cycles still cost a good couple of thousand and you know it's it's um it's something you need to have available to to do that so it's um something that we're holding on to right now and i am going to be doing first in the morning with my first um, we of the day my very first test for this cycle i just wanted to share with you what i have done this cycle so being in a place where I love being a mum, I love having Tom, I love spoiling him, um, but I am so ready for another baby. I would love to have another baby in our life, um, in our family, and um, for Tom to have a sibling, for us to have another child. Um, so I'm very hopeful. But it's important to say that if it doesn't work, that will be okay because I know from all the other times from the five other times before after Tom that we've we found our way after difficult as it may be but we've we find a path that is full of happiness full of family and love and it I feel like it's taken me a while to get here because I hear stories and other fertility journeys on YouTube and in real life where people do one round of injections and get like three or four embryos to freeze. And that's fantastic, but that's their journey. That's not mine and not Drew's and mine. And it's just us as a couple. That's one thing that I would give advice to anybody is that it's us as a couple that have this challenge to overcome, that have this path to walk. So I, when people see, um, you know, friends, family have asked me over the years, you find out someone else is pregnant, you know, you know, is that difficult for you? At times, at times, but I've never been unhappy for other people. I've always wished I was there with them. I was always wishing that that would be great to be able to do that with them together. Um, I've always just wished them well um, because our, our journey is just different and we have learnt so much about um, our bodies, 
the medical interventions that are possible to make this happen is miraculous <laughs> to say the least and drew and i were so grateful for everything that we experienced with tom his pregnancy his birth which that definitely deserves its own video so i'll share that with you another time but i just wanted to let you know that it's okay for everyone's cycles to be different for everyone's time to be different you need time to heal in between and if ever and i would love to be able to do this to help other women and couples to really heal after ivf i feel like i really listened to myself in particular over the last couple of years where i needed time in between my cycles to to adjust to accept what had happened um, and to be able to take a deep breath and and move forward and either do it again or wait some time so i um i feel that there's much to learn and much to much to heal from for some ladies who are um having a difficult time um and my heart goes out to you and i wish i could send you little cuddles and kisses um and and you know people say baby dust but you know, your baby angel is there. They're waiting. Um, so I, I hope that you have the strength and the endurance to go on and take another step. Um, but you have to ask for help. And that's been my key. I would have loved to be able to have children and start a family with Drew, with my husband, without the <clears throat> a third party being involved and I said that a number of times to different nurses along the way and to Drew that you know I would I would love to be able to fall pregnant to my husband without a middle-aged balding man <laughs> involved <laughs> so that's yet to happen but um anyway that's the funny side of it I guess and I I try to find a funny side um to anything serious so Anyway, to, to close this video out, I just wanted to share with you that we will be sharing um, this, this journey with you, um, good, bad or ugly, because that is kind of what it's like. And yeah, I, to all of you who may be watching this and going through a cycle as well, I wish you all the best, all the positive vibes um, and, and energy sending your way, because this week after my transfer, I have done all of that. I have done beautiful meditations for myself. I have taken time to relax. I took two days off work. I worked two days and then I had a day without Tom. He was at school and just chilled. And I feel so different at this point. Seven days past transfer, no pregnancy tests. Didn't even really think of it until yesterday and i went i haven't tested i haven't gone mad testing that's incredible i can't believe i've done that wow go me and that's when i've decided well drew will be home tomorrow which will be day eight and if it's going to be there then it should be there tomorrow the second line so i decided that that will be a good time for us to do it while we're home together and we can spend the day celebrating or accepting and healing. So that's something that I am, yeah, looking forward to. I hope I get to uh, share a very positive story. <laughs> so here's hoping. Well, thank you so much for watching that video. Um, I just wanted to close out by saying a huge thanks for watching. Um, IVF is a really um, personal journey and a really unique journey for everybody. Um, but I find that sharing my story helps connect people and I feel that it's also helped me heal. So that's part of the reason why I wanted to share this with you today. So thank you so much and I will be showing you the follow-ups of that um, in the videos to come as well. And yeah, I'll see you again soon. Have a fantastic day. Bye.